All right, I want to end this video where I began with an old beat up truck. And I'm not quite done, but I'm done enough for the purposes of this video series and I'm going to call it good right here. So here's the finished product. I'll give you a quick walk around. And if you don't want to watch the rest of the video, that's fine with me. I just uh, thought the series should wrap up some point. And of course, there's always something more you want to add to these things. There's a box or something. So from where it was to where it is, get up underneath there. Let's see the suspension, the back. Hey, same old spare tire. That's about the only thing I kept is the same old spare tire. Right down here. And the flatbed. One of the tricks on the flatbed, about two and a half inches minimum to get that gas intake pipe. And even that is a pretty flat pitch. It still feels all right. Two and a half inches. You can get real fancy, I guess, and you could run the cap right up here. Um, then it would have real good flow into the tank, but it really doesn't slow it down that much. And the roof is now fiberglass with gel coat, good quarter, five eighths of an inch thick and I do fiberglass, so that's pretty natural to me. A new windscreen went in, I'll show you that. There's a, a little wood in the dash now. This paint's been buffed a little bit, but it's the original paint job. Running boards with diamond plates. A little bit of grill work. I added another grate into the original grill that was there. So, and if you're just tuning in and catching it here, the inside I haven't done much except for clean it up a little bit. Clean the headliner, put a new mirror in because the other one was just terrible. I ripped the rotted dash apart. And it's, there's not really a part to put this whole dash back together again. So later in the video, I'll show you how I kind of tore that off and put a piece of wood in there when I replaced the windshield and painted the the black inside there. Things I still want to do is carpet, seats. Um, that's about it. Carpet and seats. Maybe a uh, new speaker. Other than that, it's pretty fun to drive. And I'll do the box lid on another box. That's about it. Lessons learned, I'd say not too many, not too many. I'm not dissatisfied with having these boxes here, even though I intentionally wanted to have them as a storage box. I just determined that it was just so expensive to get the hinges and fussy to get everything right, and, you know, for one cubic feet of storage. Uh, that it really wasn't worth it. This big box will be worth it. I'm actually gonna come out horizontal and then have a stacker plate that I can actually kind of lift off. So that the intent is to sleep across here and it's six foot six and some five and a half feet wide. So it's a giant picnic table at the perfect height to work off of. And at night, it's a bed. And I throw a tarp up over the top and I can roll a boat right up on top of it with the roller there. So yeah, overall it's a, it's a gas to drive. Really happy I did it. Uh, engine runs really well now. I'll show you the internal compartment so the engine is pretty clean clean air tank or uh, air intake clean it up a bit but I haven't done anything other than take the uh, air recirc tube off of the headers which was leaking pretty badly and causing me a lot of irritation with uh, irregular timing so block off plates for that but in the future plan is to rip the whole uh, carburation system out and go with a Weber there's a new stability shock down there that's also old man emu stuff there's a new water washer pump window washer pump motor down at the bottom of there other than that same engine that's been in there for 19 years and it runs really well, especially when you strip the catalytic converter out and do a two and a quarter inch exhaust straight pipe. You get some torque out of it. Should even be better with a, a Weber, so. 
I repainted this, did the Bondo work, and this rim down here. I'm, I might continue on with black. I might leave it as is. Uh, I don't know. Do whatever. Probably do new mirrors eventually. I kind of like to do black. But uh, I'm not in a big hurry to do anything yet. It's just a lot of fun. Been camping in it. Been driving it up to the mountains. Just been having a gas. Uh, nice old car. Good, good third vehicle for me. And a really fun project. And I met a lot of fun people around town just uh, really interested in it. And they have Toyotas or they had Toyotas. And uh, they're really curious as to how it, how it all came about, how it all went together. And I don't know. I'm pretty stoked. Came out good. It is just a big toy and uh, not my primary vehicle by any means, but I'm happy with that. Right on. Thanks for watching. Watch the rest of the video if you want to see the details. Bye. All right. After the paint out, uh, sprayed for about three hours today and everything's in gloss black. It's the under panel on the front, the running boards. Spare tire, front grill done in gloss black, and the bed. It came out all right. Um, no glaring drips in obvious places. But I chose gloss black because it's really common. Pretty much buy a can of gloss black spray paint anywhere if I want to touch it up. But uh, went over it fairly thorough. Got a few coats in a lot of areas and touched up the frame, <clears throat> cross members, and some of that that got oversprayed and let it dry up. And the next stage is to measure it up for plates. Okay, a few days later, still working metal. I've got these mud guard flaps in. This is a, I think about an eighth inch aluminum plate. And those are just the mounts, the mud flaps hang off of those. Um, the diamond plate material is here. It obviously needs to be tweaked a little bit to fit in. I had to go with three pieces. And the reason for that is the shop that I work with didn't have a 70 inch shear. So I couldn't come, or I had a 70 inch shear, nothing longer. So I couldn't come any longer than that. I actually had to run, run one little 10 inch strip here and then run the strips back. Um, making it a three panel system, but that's not too bad because at least this seam gives me access to the fuel tank if I lift just this panel and it's all covered by the top deck anyway, the hatch of the wedge box, which is over here. I got to be careful with the angle because of course it rains and rains while I work outside on things like mechanics and welding. And then as soon as I work in Nice shiny sheet metal, like tread plate. The sun shines, so it's blinding right now. If I hit it at the right angle, as you can see. So that wedge box goes across there. That's the lid that lifts up. And this is all the decking and hopefully it scuffs up and blurs up a little over time. I know I shouldn't, but uh, I shouldn't want that, but I do because it's uh, really bright right now. All right, a little further in the process, it's the next day. I got the diamond plate yesterday. I fastened it down this evening and this morning. I'm fastening it down with these self-tapping stainless steel fasteners. They're going through the aluminum and into the steel. So stainless steel fastener, so I don't have any rust and corrosion problems in the connection. I've got them positioned about every 12 inches along the seams, um, three plates in total. I've got the tail lights hooked back in. I've got all the wiring done. I'm pulling a wire so I can heat up the license plate light that I put in there. I have, still have to get access to the spare tire through that port. And that's about what's new. The mud flaps we saw them yesterday and I have just enough aluminum plate to do a plate in the back of the box which will act as a bit of a mud guard splashing forward. But uh, didn't have enough plate material at the shop I deal with to finish the box out. All right, today the old bed is loaded up onto the new flatbed 
and I'm hauling off to the metal recycle and along with the tailgate some bars from the inside the rack rusted bars uh, the old muffler system just a bunch of scrap iron going in for the recycle so another functional use of the flatbed get rid of the old bed And where it all ends up, going through the big shredder. Gets minced into little pieces. Comes out the other end. All right, before I button this up in here, put a new uh, shock stabilizer in there. It's a old man emu SD33, I believe. Uh, seems pretty nice. Took out a lot of the play, but the original one that was in there was completely shot. Just uh, had way too much soft play in it. Did absolutely nothing to dampen the steering. So I have nothing to compare it to, but the SD33 matches everything else in the car in this truck. So I went with it. Not disappointed. And another thing I did is I took off the original tailpipe, which I tried to use and it routed the exhaust from the muffler out between the tire and the uh, mud flap plate. And I got a 45 degree mandrel bend down to downturn and I'm shooting it out between the leaf spring and the spare tire in the back. And it seems to work so far. I only have a few miles on it, but it blows most of the heat out here. So I, hopefully that's a better system and then the mandrel bending won't backflow the exhaust back in the muffler. It's been a while since I did a video, but uh, kind of got into the body work. Wanted to solve an issue with water leaking down and leaking into the window right there and then dripping it inside the car. So I took the windshield out. I found a lot of rust holes that I repaired with fiberglass bondoed. There was a lot of dents up in the roof because these things are tissue paper thin. Now I put five layers of fiberglass and a bunch of filler in there. And I'm gonna sand that smooth and probably give it a gel coat rather than a paint. Protect it from all the salt I put up on there. Um, down on the dash, since the dash is all split and horrible, um, I'm gonna cut it and try to replace it with wood as much as possible. Uh, I could go a full wood dash down, but I really don't want that big of a woodwork project. So I think I'm just gonna fill this area in with wood and then do a cover over it if I don't like it still. Uh, paint this area, which gets exposed to the sun and you can't get to it once you put a windshield in. So once I prep all that area out, I'll drop a windshield back in it and hopefully it'll stop the leaking issues. All right, I'll end it here with uh, one of the trips I've done up to a high mountain lake to do some kayak fishing with a buddy of mine. And uh, good luck with your project if you're gonna take one on. It's a lot of fun and thanks for watching my series.